Hello my friends. I was asked to make a video of the greenhouse and the build that I've been doing for the last four months. And uh, this is going to be it. Um, the greenhouse physical dimension is 20 foot by 48 feet. The uh, access or utility building that's attached on the north end is uh, 14 feet by 20 foot wide. Um, that houses the fish tanks and uh, most of the electrical equipment and uh, anything that I need to support the growing plants. Uh, the system that I'm using is called a CHOP2 system. CHOP2 meaning con oh, uh, constant height, one pump, and the two designates that the uh, water is being pumped in two directions. One direction is to the fish tank, the other is to the growing uh, medium of growing beds or towers. Uh, what I'm growing uh, in is uh, the flood and drain uh, grow beds. Uh, this is uh, filled with gravel. The gravel is the area where most of the bacteria uh, will be living that converts the um, fish waste into the nitrates that uh, the plants need to uh, nourish them and by doing that it's cleaning the water and getting pumped back to the fish. Um, I'm also using uh, um, the raft system over top of the sump tank is a floating raft, two inch foam with two inch holes drilled into it that uh, takes net cups. <coughs> net cups support the plants that uh, sit inside the, uh, the floating foam. Um, in the water of the raft bed is air stones to pump in air so that you aerate the roots into that system. The uh, other system that I'm using is uh, growing towers. The towers is the network that's directly behind me. Um, most of it's still under construction, um, still being experimented with, what type seem to work or will work better for me. Uh, the other system that I'm using and liking and real well is wicking beds, which I've never done that before, and I love the idea that the plants never dry, dry up. There's always water there available to them. They're never soaking wet because it's absorbing the water from underneath, and it's allowing a lot of the air uh, in the soil to get to the plant roots. Um, I water that system with the uh, discharge uh, fish waste, the solid waste, from the fish tanks. Uh, I do it on a daily basis uh, to discharge the, the solids out of the uh, swirl filters. November 2nd, it snowed last night, so beginning of our winter. About nine more months of it. Sunny day today. Um, thought I would take some pictures because we don't get too many nice days like this. Okay, the greenhouse is uh, 20 foot by 48 foot uh, and the utility building which houses the fish is 14 foot by 20 foot and it's pole barn construction. This is the south end of the greenhouse. I have door access and some windows that I can open up for ventilation. It's a permanent wall uh, rather than just the plastic. The sides of the greenhouse, I have uh, roll-up sides with bug screening on the inside. And you can see at the top of the utility building, there's a ventilation that's going to be to house a high volume fan.
These straps on the greenhouse are for securing the uh, plastic covering and uh, for wind bracing. Uh, the straps on the side are for holding the sides when you roll them up. It keeps the sides tight to the, the greenhouse as it's being rolled. There's an access door in the attic space of the utility building. It allows me for room for storage and for access to the ventilation. The exterior to the utility building is covered with hemlock lumber. And uh, the doors, uh, I made them double wide so that I can uh, access the building for uh, large tanks for the fish. The interior of the utility building is my workspace and it also houses the fish tanks. There's four fish tanks, 250 gallons each. They're IBCs, intermediate bulk containers, uh, that were refurbished. Uh, they help. They used to hold uh, food grade products in them. Uh, the interior of the building is covered with a heavy plastic lining. Uh, Inside the walls is uh, four inches of fiberglass insulation. Uh, on the exterior is again another layer of plastic and then the hemlock siding. Uh, you can see right here is the service entrance coming in. To the right there is gas line. Uh, that large green unit is a power transfer switch that uh, I have plans on using for a gas generator. That's what the gas line is there for. I have the generator. I just, it's going to take a little more time to get everything hooked together. The generator's purpose is uh, if there's a power failure, it will turn on automatically and I won't have loss of power. So my pumps and electric and lighting will be uninterrupted. Uh, also, I have installed a gas furnace. Uh, this is going to keep both the utility building and the greenhouse warm through the winter. Uh, I'm still doing some construction. Most of the work is finished. Um, this is my workstation. I have a sink, a uh, stainless steel countertop and this is for access to uh, planting, seeds, cutting, uh, whatever I need to do for servicing the greenhouse. Uh, the fish tanks, uh, I have monitors to monitor the temperatures of the water. Uh, you can see here uh, the two tanks, 65 and 64 degrees. Uh, one of the tanks is filled with bluegill, perch, and crappie. These came out of my pond. Second tank has bass. Trying to see if you can see any. They're pretty big ones in there. Third tank is tilapia. The tilapia are cleaning up my uh, lettuce that's starting to bolt. And the third tank is catfish. There's about a hundred of them in there. and water temperature in the tilapia tank is 65 degrees. The water flow into the fish tanks um, coming from the sump tank. The outflow coming from a standpipe pulling water off to the bottom of the tank. Then 
The discharge is going into this uh, filter tank. It's a swirl filter. Uh, water is coming in, diverted at an angle, uh, makes a real gentle swirling action, and the outflow outtake is this uh, center pipe. Um, this first filter is a solid removal. Um, there's a funnel shape at the very bottom of this tank. It's hard to see. It looks like a mirror. The, uh, the funnel shape opens with a valve and it allows me to discharge water and solid come out with, with the discharge. Okay, from this uh, outflow of the swirl tank, it goes into the second filter tank. This is uh, fine particle removal. Uh, the large solids that uh, aren't removed, or the large solids are removed in the first tank. The fine particles then flow through this uh, tank. It's filled with bird netting and the bird netting latches onto the real fine particles. Uh, this is cleaned about once every one to two weeks. And uh, the, it, th this type of filter system should remove about 90 to 95 percent of all the uh, particles that's in the water. And the discharge from this one goes buried through the ground into the sump tank. The sump tank is buried in the ground. It's six foot wide by ten foot long and access to the sump tank is this bench seat. Everything from the uh, fish tanks to the grow beds to the growing towers, they all drain back into this sump tank. This sump tank is about four feet deep. Now you can't see the pumps. It's down there pretty good. It holds about 1,600 gallons of water. The system that I'm using is called a chop tube. Chop standing for constant height, one pump, and two designating that the water is split going into two directions. Uh, one direction is to the fish tank, the other direction is to the growing beds. Um, you can see here on the outlet there's two plugs. I happen to have two pumps and the purpose of having a second pump, it's uh, not part of the CHOP2 system, meaning one pump, uh, what I found is I need extra pressure to push water into my grow towers. Okay, the fundamental system going on here, uh, first of all, I have this raft bed uh, over top of my sump tank. And it, it uh, fills up, right here is the intake into the tank. It's, the tank is divided into two halves. It extends to the far end. There's a, a inlet into the second half. The second half flows over to here. And if I can raise this side up. Right there is the discharge that flows into the sump tank. And you can see underneath air tubes, there is uh, air stones inside uh, that's providing oxygen for the roots to the plants. My temperature control set here with this thermostat. Um, I have it set for 65 degrees. 
Uh, the temperature usually is maintained around 70 to 80 degrees during the day when the sun is out. And that's winter time. The uh, ceiling to the greenhouse, I said before it was double layered plastic. Uh, this small fan right here is an inflation fan. I leave it on 24-7. It keeps both the roof to the greenhouse and the roll-up sides are all inflated. That gives extra insulation for the uh, winter time. Okay, right here I have a sensor. This is a remote uh, thermostat sensor. It gives me the temperature inside the greenhouse that I can read from inside my kitchen. The uh, greenhouse, I started construction in uh, early June and uh, this is 2nd of November. So we're talking like four months build. Okay, uh, four months is a very immature system for an aquaponics. You need six to nine months for uh, the system to become very health healthy and uh, compatible with all the different uh, life things happening with the system. The beginning, uh, I started with just a few tanks, uh, experimenting to see how the flood and drain would work. These are the first uh, grow beds that were installed and the first plants, which were beans. The beans did extremely well. Uh, they're Amish heirloom. I don't know what the brand of the bean would be, uh, but uh, these are mature beans here. You can see the size. I'm leaving these go for seed. And uh, I usually eat the beans when they are about half that size. And you can see here the beans really did well. They're growing oh, probably 20 feet. And you can see here these are ready to pick and they're only a third to a half the size of those mature beans which again here they here's the mature bean size to my hand <clears throat> the flood and drain system has a bell siphon uh, these are the original ones that I used there's uh, probably four different types, different sized pipes that are being used. Uh, they were all experimented. I finally came up with a system uh, that I believe works much better. Uh, the heart to the system is in the gravel bed itself. This is where what I call the microbes are living. That's the bacteria that converts the uh, the uh, well, that's pretty color. It converts the ammonia from the fish urine, fish waste, to uh, nitrite, and then another one to a nitrate. And the nitrate is the fertilizer for the plants. And uh, plants take that out and clean the water. It all flows back into the sump, which then gets pumped back into the fish tanks. So they're working together. And you can see here from the beginning uh, tanks or grow beds, um, as I kept adding, uh, they got planted as they were being finished. So you can see the plants are progressively smaller and smaller. Okay, this one side in the greenhouse, it's about uh, 40 feet in length of grow beds and the end you, I have some conventional uh, plants growing here um, my composting tower uh, these barrels half barrels here are wicking beds uh, they so far have been functioning extremely well all these tomatoes that I have growing in these are, all come from cuttings 
and uh, it took off really fast and quick. All these tomatoes, even in the grow beds, are from cuttings. Uh, the second side over here, I just last week finished filling all these up, which it was a major accomplishment. Tons of gravel moved in here by hand, loaded and unloaded. Glad that job is finished. Uh, that was the major job. Uh, all of these uh, grow beds, they're half barrels. Um, the barrels cost me two dollars a piece from Welch's up in Erie or Northeast Pennsylvania. Um, it's a, one of the cheaper parts of the build. Uh, they're built four beds to a unit. There are five units down the length of the greenhouse. Uh, the system that I am happy with uh, is four connected together with one uh, bell siphon, which you can see right here. My cups are to keep bugs, mosquitoes out. Bell siphon in there. The brick on top because uh, they the bell siphon has a tendency to want to float a little bit and that weights them down. Okay the center to the greenhouse is this structure you can see uh, a lot of work still have to be done. This is the grid work, the drain system. It all tapers down to that far corner on the right there and that feeds into the sump tank in the ground. These towers, uh, I'm manufacturing all the towers. Um, I decided on building towers with uh, straw inside to use as a grow medium and it allows the water to flow and saturate everything. I don't know how these are going to work but it seems like it may be a real positive way of growing these. Um, the nice thing with these t towers compared to what I'm seeing with the Zip Grow, which is the commercial version, uh, which I can't afford to buy, is you can see here on the unused open space, the drain has algae growing. And with the Zip Grow towers, um, I'm not familiar with them. I haven't bought them, but I see that it looks like they drain into an open gutter, uh, which that would allow algae to grow. With these towers, there's not a lot of uh, extra space. They fit fairly snug into the drain uh, system, and it should have minimum algae growth in there. The water supply for the grow towers, I'm using uh, uh, RV garden hose, uh, just because that, that's supposed to be the safe one to drink if uh, you're drinking out of a garden hose. Um, I'm punching holes into the, to the uh, garden hose and putting in drip tubing to feed the top of the towers. The south end of the greenhouse, um, using this open area for conventional type plants, uh, wicking beds, and also this is my lounge. Can't have a greenhouse without having a lounge in it. Um, right now I'm using it as a workspace, um, filling the grow towers with straw. Um, straw should have minimum amount of seed in it and uh, that should support the roots well, uh, conduct the water, transport the water through the tower, and allow a medium that the uh, red earthworms can live in. And that's about a summary uh, of the whole system. Um, we'll see how things will go through the winter. Uh, this morning, or last night, we had snow, uh, the temperature was down into the low 30s. 
Uh, this morning uh, it was in the 30s and by noon time the sun came out and actually right now I'm kind of sweating inside uh, the greenhouse. So the sun does amazing things. It really warms it up when it comes out. So nine months from now when it's spring we'll see uh, how the nine month winter uh, bears for us. Thanks for watching. Have a good day, my friends.